I'm going to go a bit deeper into this bad each way betting thing because I've got experience with this and I think it is a really, really good thing that the bookmakers really hate. They they really hate this so badly. Now, I've been meaning to post about this for a while, but there's not many videos out there about it. But um, if you go to a race course and try and place these bad each way bets, right, they'll just tell you to do one. They'll give you, instead of a fifth of the odds, they'll offer you a seventh of the odds or an eighth of the odds. And that in itself speaks for itself. So what we're going to talk about in this video is what a bad each way bet is. Um, how you cannot really lose on these mathematically, how to find these. I'm going to go through for a long time how to manually find these, comparing from odds checker to Betfair. I'm going to do it on the fly. I'm going to do it no preempt, no nothing like that. It's Tuesday. If you can find them on Tuesday, right, you can find them for sure on Saturday. So I'm just coming in blind and going to show you, like, if you can find them on Tuesday, you'll find them anytime, basically, like that. I'm also going to tell you the dangers of being gubbed by this because you will be gubbed. But it's up to you. You know, you'll be gubbed from everything. You know, like Khan said on this video, like, you'll be gubbed from most things. So it's up to you. What do you want to do with your accounts? There are ways around this. I'm going to sh tell you the antidote to getting gubbed. But even then, the antidote needs another antidote. And that's Sharbin. Now, I've got a Sharbin playlist on my website, on my YouTube channel, rather. If you come in here guys if you're looking for anything you'll no doubt find it on this channel not many people watch this channel type in Sharbin and Bob's your mum's brother there'll be a few Sharbin videos on there but this is related to bad each way bets now the other topics we're going to talk about is how to sharp on the terminals in the shop because you will get shop gubbed as well there are theories that you can place up to 200 pound in the shop without getting questioned but you just try it yeah Go out and try it, get back to me, tell me how long it lasted. That's of course if you're going in the same shop. I did also do a video about three years ago, this Sharbin video. I've got to tell you a funny backstory to this video. In I'll timeline it down below. The guy said to me, oh, they said to you SP only when I got shop gubbed, right? I went into that Paddy Power again and um, I was talking to the woman behind the ramp in there. Uh, I didn't know because I thought he had left this guy. It was like six years ago or something when that happened. And I went in there and apparently he's married to the girl behind the counter. And he turned up and a look on my face. Must have been horror. He's back. Oh, no, but I don't think he remembered me. So we're also going to talk about Sharbin and on-course bookmakers, how they hate it and whether this is hot or not. So let's get on with the video. So what is a bad each way bet? A bad each way bet is when... The bookmakers price up things um, in these races where the odds are stacked against them. A bad each way bet is when the bookmakers odds are stacked against them. The bookmakers will offer place terms, right? So I quickly got up this race here, 140 at air. Uh, where is this air race? This is odds checker, by the way. And I'll show you how to scroll through this later. We're going to go for a manual... Um, manual search on these this one for your air we can see this one here this is what I do to be lazy right I'll look on here the win odds 2.16 4.2 7.6 the each way market is lower that's the first red sign that there's gonna be an each way extra place now what am I talking about uh, each way bad each way bet right so we come into the place terms on this nil sun 1.48 nil sun on here is three four point zero this is in fractions because if you're going to calculate this you're going to have to do it in fractions but i've made a nice sheet on here for you guys to refer to i will show you later on how to do a manual calculation on this it's not that hard you just have to get your head around fractions if you need to learn fractions i've got a fractions and decimals calculator on my website up here just come in there and you can get cracking with that but it's only just a matter of repetition we can see for a fifth of the odds like i put on here a fifth of the odds and a quarter of the odds a quarter of the odds you'll usually get in handicap races eight runners or more or depending what type of race it is i'm not going to bore you with that so it's 1.6 there for the place odds yet we can see it's 1.48 so straight away that is one now, i'm not going to keep going into it right i'll show you later on in this video how to find these and what the calculations are, how to do it 
manually and how to do it on here, how to overlay, how to underlay. But 1.6 there, if we had a tenor, if we laid a tenor of that, but had our bookmaker bet at 1.6 odds, we would then stand to win £1.20, which is 12% ROI on that bet. And bear in mind, that's 1.48. I would never place a bet to lay like that. I'd always do 1.46. Yeah, you can get caught out. But these odds are not literal right now. This market will get filled up with this disparity. There's only a tiny little bit there. But I'll just shoot for down the middle. You can come unstuck with this, but I'll mention it later on how to do it. But what the bookmakers hate about this, this is why this is a bad each way bet, is that they have no defence to these odds that they set out. They're set out that it's 4.0 and it's a fifth of the odds. Yet the book, the exchange odds are the true odds. This is the true odds of that. And you're just value betting. So what you're doing there is Arbin. And there's four different methods you can use for this bad each way betting. You can either do it without laying. You can do it with laying the place odds only. You can do it laying both. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can do it by overlaying the um, place as well. So they've all got different risk factors. Say you did it this way and you overlaid it on here to win. I don't know. I'm doing this on the fly. I don't know what's going to be, 77p or something. There you go. 80 pence, yeah? You could get 80 pence overlay out of that for a £10 stake. So that's what? 8% ROI. Not bad, thank you very much. And you can do this on several horses. I'll show you later on in this video how we do it on several horses in the race. So this is not bad, is it? You think, wow, if you can do that on one and get 8% ROI on one horse... And you can do that four times, five, six. And like I showed you earlier in that picture, I picked six out in that race. Have I still got it up here? Uh, no, I haven't got it. I got rid of it. But there were six in that race that I think there's only nine runners. But you will get gov for this. And we'll go on about why um, it's best to sharp these. But even then, you've got to be careful. And this is how bad anything that you'll get gov from really quickly, like, for example, straight arbing. I've been bet three six five accounts with horses, which is just loads of them, right? It's red hot. You'll get gubbed. It's not really worth it. But it depends what you want to do with these. Say, I don't know if you could get on bits of stakes here and there from semi gubbed accounts. If that is a thing, I think there is semi gubbed accounts. Some gub accounts are really gubbed. Um, so we're going to show you how to calculate these, right? So this one here was four point zero, wasn't it? How did we come to this calculation on there that is 1.6 for 4.0? So 4.0 4 is 3 to 1, yeah? So we go 3 divided by 5, which is the place odds, is 0 0.6. So we simply do that, and then you add 1 on there. So you do 3 divided by 5, so it's 3 to 1. So if you ever see 4.0, just take 1 off. This is the pain in the butt about but you soon get your head around it. It's not advanced. I'll drag this down a little bit. So, I can't drag it down because it's going to be a pain in the butt. I have to watch my language on this YouTube channel. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. And then you add 1 on this, 1.6. But we can lay it there for 1.48. Like I said, I've never... A lot of this video I'm going to be repeating myself because I got told off of rushing. So, I would personally put that in at that 1.46. Well, that's moved now, stitched me up. But that's what I'd have done anyway, and always press keep. When you put them in there, yeah, say you did put it in there at that. I'm just doing this. I hope it don't get taken. I ain't really that bothered anyway. Uh, press it like that, press keep. Why do you press keep? You press keep in case there's some non-runner like this one here. This was taken out 7.57 in the morning. But say there was a non-runner now, or there's a non-runner just before the off, and this weren't laid, something like that. The Betfair algorithm will recalculate these odds and you won't be bounced out of the market. Therefore, you have more chance of that laying. I just genuinely think that, genu generally think that it's good practice to press keep all the time. So do that, guys, because you will come unstuck one day. Um, always press keep, right? So what have we got to move on to next? Now, sorry if this is drawn out. I just want to give you a good understanding of this each way, bad each way, um, 
betting so we're showing you how to calculate it so if there's a non-runner this is the main thing with this stuff you see on this race here yeah there's eight selections now the cutoff point for these races is eight selections for three places yeah so if you did do this like we did say we did lay it and it was successful say we laid it for argument's sake at 1.5 like it was earlier yeah and now there's a non-runner and there's now seven selections in that so the bookmaker is not going to pay us three places they'll pay us two places so that will make our bet not a positive ev bet anymore it will turn it into a negative ev bet so that's another risk with these if you uh messing around near to the crossover point of where these place terms are like in a handicap with 16 runners if they drop it down to 15 you might only get three places if you've done one in a five horse race and there's a non-runner usually in a five horse race you always get paid out for two if there's a non-runner it'll be just a win only and these are the times where you will lose out on this and you just got to accept it this is the same as Greyhound Arbitrage. If you lay something on Greyhound Arbitrage, there's no salvage in that bet if there's a non-runner because it goes to SP only. With this, a lot of the each way bad each way bets you'll find are close to the cutoff point of or the crossover point of how many runners there are in the race. And that's one thing to be aware of. There's not really much salvage in it of it you can do is set from trying to back it back or lay it back or whatever you're doing well you wouldn't be laying it back would you if you laid it if you've um, value betting you're going to get kicked in the balls a bit but you will profit long term about this because there's a lot less non-runners than there are the ones that actually do happen so the gubbing dangers of this are quite high right you you will get gubbed through doing this it's just what, what do you want to do yeah because I, I can't tell you what is the best way you get go for anything you'll get go for two ups for slaughtering two ups you'll get go for this you'll get go for that no one out there can say oh if you don't do this you'll get gubbed or if you do this you'll get gubbed because they don't know you don't they don't even know yeah so just have common sense if you're going to do this they're going to hate it because put yourself in their shoes do you want someone taking a mick like this would you let them do it no so that's why you should go into the shop but I'll tell you about how to play the shops and the terminals so guys the first race of the day and it's like one minute until the off I'm going to show you an example you can see 10 to 3 is available for this Manila Buster and rather than go to calculate this I'm going to show you on the fly how to do this Manila Buster there it's 4.5, 4.3, so you won't really get any qualifying loss. You can see it's lower there, and on the place odds, it's 1.36. But if we go to the, uh, in, if we go to our calculation table, we can find on the website it's 1.67. The place odds will be with the bookmakers based on 10 to 3. Yet if we laid it there, it's 1.35. So let's say we laid it at 10 pound there, uh, but backed it for say 8 pound. Uh, then that would be about a two pound green so we backed it for eight pound at 1.67 and laid it for ten pound at these odds I'm sort of doing this in a rush it's around a two pound green so you see what I mean that's just that's 20 percent off of that each way up now if we have a quick look at the other ones there's nine to two which is 5.5 .5 available there for a beast of margins which makes 1.57 I will explain a bit clearer on the next video. It's 1.9 there, you see. 9 to 2 is 5.5. .5. Although that weren't generally available, it's 4 to 1 twice there, 7 to 2. This is why it's good to use a fractions decimals calculator, guys. If you're not used to converting these, I have got a free one on my website. If you come up to calculators, there's a free fractions to conversions calculator on there that's free to use, of course. I'll leave your links down below. But you can see there's two there. This has gone in play now. It's because I'm not organised today. And I genuinely do not know, right, how many each way extra places there are going to be in this. Uh, what am I talking about each way? Each way bad each way bets that are going to be today. That's why I jumped on that one quickly because I knew that one was one earlier. In fact, it weren't such a big edge earlier. 
So I can slow down now and we're going to go through the race naturally because I'm not going to look like a mug if there's no more. Like I said, it's Tuesday, the 21st of December. Now, Tuesday, in terms of the amount of races on horse racing that are available, on a Tuesday, there's going to be a third of the races that are available than on a Saturday. So, although this is a bad example today to show you, in fact, for you guys, it's a really good example because I'm starting off on the one of the weakest days possible, you know. It's not going to really get any worse than this. And that's why, that's why I desperately jumped on that one because it's the first one I looked at. Now, obviously, what we're going to do here is run through. This is what we used to do back in the day. Like I said, I've been much better than I've been since, since the betting exchanges. I used to do it off a of teletext. Now, when this site Odds Checker came out around that time, in the late 90s, early 90s, I can't remember when. This was a big thing. And all we would do is just go load up Betfair like this and load up Odds Checker. And to be honest with you, I still do that to this day. I find so many arbs this way. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I'm stuck in my ways. But obviously there's not going to be known in that race. So we're going to slow down now. I had to panic in that last bit. This is how I would look for it. I'm going to show you the easy way how to look for these and use this as a base right because although this is the easiest way to look for them use it as a base when first starting out because although i say use this as a cheat kind of way to find your each way bad i forget what i'm talking about now i keep saying extra places if you use this as a starting point where to find your bad each ways then you can work outwards from there this is not always going to be the answer but you can't really go wrong if you look at this lazy way so what the lazy way is is you scroll through and that's what i'm going to do in this video because i'm not going to bore the life out of you lot so we get um plumpton up on here we go change track this is free site like i say because people get scared every time you put a website oh, oh god what's the plug in now so 125 what you do is you look on the win market on betfair and go switch over to each way market you can see here look you keep your eyes fixed around here Usually if you don't see nothing lower of these three, when I say lower, not just like one tick lower, on about usually two, three, four, five, six, seven plus ticks lower. Like that last one was loads of ticks lower. So although our ARB comes from the place market, ARB in the place, that each way market on the win gives it away. So you go each way there, you'll see it's four. Now, this is one other thing you've got to ignore, guys, the disparity between 4.5 and 4.9. It's 125 there. At the time recording, this is 12.24, right? So it's only an hour away, and Betfair is far more liquid than Smarkets and so on. So you can just guesstimate. This is not always going to happen, by the way. You can guesstimate that's 4.7, right, just for argument's sake. And the same with this, just cut it in the middle. The bigger the disparity, the less you can guesstimate like that. And... That's just how I do it. And as you can see, this one here was 4.4, 2.94, 4.4, 5.1, and they're all more. So that would genu generally speak for itself that there's nothing there. Let's have a look at this one. We'll notice here's Sammy Bear 7.0. Oh, Sammy Bear is 6.2 there. So that should flag you up there that what's going on there? Sammy Bear is 6.2 there. It's the same for the win, if you notice, for the favourite. It's 1.38. So I'm going to not rush on this video because I've been told off on my other videos that I speak too fast, that I go on too much. And the reason I do that is I don't want to be boring for the old timers on here that know what they're doing. But at the same time, the people that are watching videos, they do it to actually learn. And I should know better, really, because I watch IT videos, so I'm clueless at IT. And I like it when I, sometimes I have to slow them down on the... Uh, where you can slow people down on YouTube to 0.75, or sometimes in my case, half of the speed. So I'm going to go slow. So we've got a red alert on this one because 6.2 there, and then bear in mind what I said with the disparity between 5.7 and 6.2. Let's just say that's 6.0, right? You, this is not always the case, yeah? A lot of what I say, do not take it literally. Take, unless I say so. Just take it as like that's the kind of thing you're shooting at because you're never going to have these big liquid markets unless it's like 
a Saturday, a big race coming up, Cheltenham, of course, all this kind of stuff. A good race to look for with this kind of thing with Cheltenham has always been in the past, the Supreme Novice Hurdle, which historically has always been the first race of the of the festival, usually the 140 or the 150 race, on the Tuesday of the, uh, the festival. Because the reason that is a good one is there's usually a short price favourite in there, um, around 2 two to 1, 3.0, and then therefore the rest of the field are going to be big. So that's another thing you look for on these. But let's have a look at the place odds on this. We'll do the calculation on this one because we've got the time. So we can see it's 2.0, right? The win odds. So it's looking promising. It's looking promising already. So I'll pull up the chart. Go to the website. I made this earlier. This one. Because I've been working on this article all week. And it was only that Khan come up with his post yesterday. I was thinking, no, please don't be bad each way. And it was. And that's why I'm posting this today. But I recommend looking at Khan's videos. It's a lot more articulate than me. And it's a lot less... Time. So if you want a condensed version, go to Khan's video. A lot better quality videos as well. So what odds did we say that was? I'm doing this on the fly, guys. I don't even know what's going on. Two o'clock at Plumpton. So we go into here at Plumpton, two o'clock. And we can see straight away that's five. So I've kept this at fractionals for a reason, right? Because I know you guys don't like fractional. Um, I always keep these at fractionals, by the way, anyway. So that's five which is 6.0 yeah so we go to this market uh that's no good because it's out one but i wonder if the place is going to be an up because i genuinely don't know you can tell by the tone of my voice i haven't got a clue and then it might not even be i don't know let's have a look so the place is 2.0 right let's have a look what the uh chart says so we're going 6.0 it is exactly 2.0 so that's not one that's bang on but on instances like this i'll keep a look on this market right so i don't know what sort of alert system you use you might use um for something on your phone just to go off at say 150 check the two o'clock at plumpton market is this now an ob because it's coasting right on the point there it could open up an opportunity of a 1.8 up to a 2.0 or 2.0 to a 2.2, something like that, because the odds are going to change. This looks like the odds will change. They're not all going to stay like that, no way, because look, they're all across the board like that. Bookmakers don't operate like that. Well, let's have a look at the 4 to 11 calculation. So we'll find out the odds of the fractions of 4 to 11, 4 divided by 11. I'm going to put the odds on ones in here. Um, the odds on 4 divided by 11 which is 4 to 11 it's 0 0.36 yeah so that's you always add one on to these so this is where it's a bit messed up right because you've got to put in the fractions odds which is 4 to 11 best price not just one place so that's another thing to be aware of when you find one of these odds in one place only you've got to be fast and you've got to realize that it could likely change down to two to five quickly. Um, sorry, one to three quickly. If that was stand out at four to eleven, it could stand out. It could change quickly. But we can see that's available at three places. Like if that got cut there, you jump to one of these, providing. But you just use your discretion. If you're doing stuff like this, you're probably a bit advanced anyway. So what did we say that was? 0 0.36 there. So when we do 0 0.36. Divided by 5 is 0.07, whereas on here it's 1.1, so that's no good, that one. So we're only looking at the front two on these ones, and this is the lazy way of doing it. We go in here, and don't just check like now, check nearer to the time as well, but these will give you the alerts in the lazy way. So you can see it's 3.7 there, 6.47, uh, that one in the third place there, you see it's 7.8, that's no good. Sometimes, like in this image here, that I'm going to put up, if I can remember to find it, because I've been working on this all week, that you'll see um, six, seven of these or something like that in one race, and that's where the big money comes in, but you know, you're going to get gub for this. I don't care what you say, you will get gub. The bookies hate this stuff. 
I would too if I was a bookie. Now we can see with this race, it's 3.5 there, it's too big on here. Like you can see this one here is 3.5, 3.7, say 6.4, and they're too, they're bigger on there. So that's probably why I was rushing because I think it might be the only one. We've got two meetings left to look through. Like I said, on a Saturday, it's going to be a lot easier. So we can see in this race, there's a lot of disparity between these two. Not worth looking at that. Don't look very promising. Let's go to the next race. Now, obviously, a quicker way of doing this is to be to look at the races. Like I said, if you've got a short price favourite uh, with a big field, or you've got two short price favourites, like two that you'll get around 3.2 in odds, 3.25, which is 9 of 4, and then you've got 10 other runners that are going to be big prices, that's a good race to look at. Or you've got, say, uh, four to six, one point six six favourite in a race, and then a load of outsiders like that. But this ain't going to be one. That is five point C, five point three, five point seven. Sometimes you can instantly tell. You just look at this. There's no value. This going to be. It's not worth looking at that race. One forty. Let's have a look at this race. There's two here. Quite clear. I don't know. I doubt it. Let's have a look. That's the same there. So this would be one of those races. See there. You can lay at two point two. Let's have a look at the place we can see look if it's the same or lower have a look at the place you can see what i'm doing here that's lower that one 3.95 so we might have ourselves a place arb here 2.22 and it's the same 2.22 there this is a good sign let's go into the place so we've got 1.23 and 1.52 and bear in mind like i always say don't like i say don't take this as literal i just go with it that's 1.48 or that's 1.5 to be safe yeah, the same as this one. That's 1.95. That's 1.21 or 1.22. So then we go into the odds checker. 140 at air. There are other ways of doing this. You don't have to do it on odds checker. You don't have to be an old man like me. But this is what I do. Um, Bill Baxter, we can see 6 to 5 there. Best price of threes there with William Hill. And another thing, if you, are, if you do take the risk and do this with your accounts... Like if you've got the uh, William Hill money back if second offer, all these offers all combine into one another. Like if this was one of the meetings, I don't know what the meetings are today. This nil sum is three to one. That would qualify for the money back if second offer if that came back if second. So you've got all these extra additional things that could happen to your bets, you know. Although you'd only be paid out on the second place on the money back if second offer for the win part. All these little things add up, same as non-runners, they add up same as you know like when you've got rule fours there's so many what ifs that can happen that you're always in a better position the more bets you place that's just my opinion anyway so let's have a look at this we've got 1.23 1.55 but what are the odds so we've got six to five and three to one so let's have a look at this three to one first because that looked more promising let's get up the sheet that i made or should we go to the website let's go to the website that sheet's a bit prettier than the website one but as you can see here, it's 4.0, 1.6 the place for a fifth of the odds. Is it a fifth of the odds? Yes, they always are. Unless they're, I'm going to put the races in this page. Unless they're um, handicap races or over a certain amount, 16 runners, all this kind of thing. Handicap races, they'll give a quarter of the odds generally too, providing there's enough runners in there. So anyway, 1.55 there. And we've got here 1.6, so that's one straight away. 1.6, we'd jump on that William Hill one, we'd lay it there, but I would lay it, I would just go to lay that, say, at 1.5 for a tenner, and then you can overlay that like we did earlier, or you could get the tenner of, what was that, 1.6, that we calculated that at, we'd get 1.6 uh, for a tenner. I know it's only a pound, yeah, but it depends what option you're going to go for. In this article, I did um, mention. I did mention in this article that there are several options you can take. I've given the options down below. Personally, I, I've been betting a long time. If I could turn back the clock, I would just not lay nothing. It's a lot easier said than done, but I wouldn't lay nothing. Um, but you can't track your profits that way. You can't forecast that you might get A, B, or C. It's a bit of a lottery, the same as high-risk casino, but the variance is nowhere near it. 
but that was one so we had that one yeah what's this one here 1.2 so 140 is six to five what did the sheet say at six to five it said if we got one for six to five no we haven't i need to put that one in there 2.2 .2. so let's just go and do a calculation six to five six divided by five which is the fractions is 1.2 divided by five won't it that's 0.24 so that's not going to be one well it's a slight one 0.24 but that's not worth getting involved with compared to that one that one was a lot better let's have a look at this half track half track is six is there and on here we got it at 1.99 and we know a fifth of the odds of five is 2.0 i'll show you on the website uh website on my yeah it is my website we can see at five to one which is 6.0 is a fifth of the odds is 2.0 so use this guys this page i've done this sneakily so it's hopefully someone will come and look at my website for a change but it's easy to refer to but don't get too reliant on it don't be like oh i'm looking at this chart it will sink in after a while though so you can see 2.0 like i said i wouldn't lay that at 1.98 i would i wouldn't wait either what, 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 what a lot of match betters do they'll wait they'll keep waiting don't wait for nothing type that in there like that say say i'm going to type that i'm just going to type it in now just for the sake of it type it in there it'll pop up yeah because why would you wait when that could get taken you know i would put it in there and risk that knowing that you could come out to this yes sometimes they can drift and all of this but in my experience and i can only speak for myself i found a better success rate doing that putting them in there early i liken it to say doing a car boot sale if you put it in there early if you set your store out early you've got more chance of selling stuff and this is just selling odds isn't it on here so we've found several on here on this 140 race let's have a look at some more fame valley what price is that 15 to 2 fame valley sorry if this is getting a bit tedious guys um 15 to 2 there we can see 2.5 fame valley so i showed you how to do the manual calculation which i doubt if any of you want, want to do so we've got 2.5 on fame valley and it's 2.4 there so like i said that's 2.28 2.2 2.4 2 you could just take the 2.4 i think i'm not taking my chances personally and i can only speak for myself i'm not a financial advisor terms and conditions may apply put it in like that or whatever you're doing 100 or 20 whatever you're doing like i said you will get guff for this stuff but it's up to you which i'll go on to about the sharbing thing further into this video there's green vault there's an 18 to one shot there for green vault let's have a look back on the website 18s is 19.04.6 um 4.6 and it's 4.5 there again like i'd be a little bit more cautious about these about these longer shot ones and although i did include the big shots down here like 200 to 1 and all that nah that like do it at your peril this is the, the only good thing I like about no lay, right? Because you haven't got to have the bankroll to lay it, especially with the win portion. But I've just showed you here how many of these are ups. There was one potential there, a definite there, a definite there, a definite there. Like, and you was making 20% out of some of these. You know, if you're making 20% of your stake, then you're laughing. But like I said, you will get gut. But if you go into the shop and do it, like I'm going to explain later on the terminals, that's your biggest success rate going on the terminals rather than going to the counter because you will get shot gubbed i don't care what people say go and do it yeah go and do it keep doing it in the same shop and then see what happens i'm telling you it, go and do it on course as well go and do this on course they'll either refuse your bet right because you know this was a fifth of the odds if you go to the race course and say yeah mate i want 100 each way on this it'll say to you look it'll either point to his board which will say a seventh of the odds or an eighth of the odds or he'll tell you to do one in the most polite way possible so let's finish these races off i'm surprised that um i found two though of course it's going to stitch me up on a tuesday i like taking a pessimistic approach and showing 
worst case scenarios because you know it can only get better then but i'm sure i'm doing something wrong on this video because it's on the fly so it's not even um preempted i knew that that first race was happening so we can see here there's one already 4.8 can you hear that burger fan or whatever it is going off in the background shut up i'm doing a video don't you understand no i got it the wrong way around there's not one there so this is the lazy way right but i recommend newbies do this why not you know so we can see on the win here our dear across is 14.0 yeah on the plate on the each way market it's 13.0 grant is only eight pound but let's have a look at the place 215 at air is 3.3 .3. so there's 10 of there 215 at air what's this one called our dear across 11s in nearly 10 places there i mean 10 bookmaking operators so 11 to 1 is 12.0 let's have a look on the sheet 12.0 is 3.2 what we're saying on there no it's not one so you'll find that they're not always like i said earlier when you refer from the win to the each way yeah it's lazy but it don't always tell the full picture but it's a good reference point just to have a look because sometimes there's weird stuff that goes on with these and it's the same as everything guys the same as betfair trading the same as multi-accounting the same as everything sometimes it's not literal these things happen you know it's um sometimes you just got to go out there and get your hands dirty not ask no one do it yourself you know there's too many people scared to to uh to explore so we look at the final meet in newcastle um we're just going to take a lazy approach on this i'm not going to go into it too much you can just instantly see here 3.55 3.84.4 4. and below that they're not below that any of these we've found two so far like i said it's a gloomy tuesday i look outside and it's foggy as anything personally i like this weather because you get a long night a long evening so this this one doesn't look too clever but like i said this is not um it's not over if you do this scan now and check for these because it could happen later on this is oh, i did think i'll see something then none of these are lower um let's go into these formal races let's have a look at this kaboo 1.99 no they don't know this a bit patchy this market it's newcastle tonight um there's nothing worse when you do these as well you know like lately with the frozen weather some meetings get called off and you earmark a load of these and they get called off or you have some massive arbs and the meeting gets cancelled so let's have a look at these there's not going to be none no it looks like it's finished that but that's how to do it guys that's how to scan for the races i know I'm, i wouldn't just leave that myself personally but i'm recording a video it's going on too long anyway I would use the reference point from the wind to the each way learn how to calculate it manually like i showed you it's quite easy for it's only a bit confusing for decimals guys on match betting who are not used to fractions um don't get overwhelmed by it, fractions and that because it's just a, an extra adding an extra digit on there but use the um this table here and then you'll soon enough pick it up so the next point we move on to And the reason why we'll go into it now so this article i did on the website i'll leave the link down for, below for this the article explains all probably in a bit more depth and these are the terminals here like this is a william hill shop as a terminal they're good shops for the terminals they are they stick to their prices i've found generally anyway like apparently paddy powers price odd sorry operated by someone else on the terminals and this some of this can differ but if you go in there and you place it on the terminals the main objective of using that terminal is so you can't get pulled you know so even if you go in with a covid mask with a pair of sunglasses on and a wig and have different wigs and sunglasses and covid masks you, you'll, you'll get pulled if you keep going in there by the um the shop staff because you you will do uh, if you're an experienced sharper just comment down below what's happened to you before but you will do but a way of um sidestepping that is using these terminals go in and go out 
don't better the life out of it be doing like 100 pound and all this stuff just do like what we showed you i showed you in that image earlier that you had five in a race you do five in a race like that bang out and then try and rotate the shops if you live in a inner city you can easily do this all you got to do is get organized and it's worth traveling around doing this and it's worth also learning the odds because if you're going to be doing shop arbing for this you're need, going to need to think on the fly and pull up say a website like this or so any website it doesn't have to be a match betting website a website that explains the odds like this so you can quickly refer to it because it's not rocket science it will be second nature after a while so you know if you're in a shop bang bang you can just put it on like that and you can lay it you don't want to be pulling devices out too much especially nowadays you know like they're, they're watching you everywhere even when i go in paddy power i'm taking pictures of offers and that i'm watching looking around thinking oh, is there a camera looking at me or something like that so beware of this guys that this is a really good thing but it's a bad thing as well it's toxic it's this has been around for over 20 years this is that be my dad was doing this years ago i know people were doing this years ago before um before betfair you know because the bookmakers they they can't defend themselves when i say you probably question how can you be doing it before betfair when there's nowhere to lay you do it from a value perspective now i did mention in this article your four options for doing this and also like i said check out khan's video he explains it a lot quicker than me and the video quality is a lot better than mine um i explained the ways of doing this is um like you could go for the for the no lay option right which is what i prefer i would if i had a second life and someone said right you've got a complete set of ungubbed accounts and you've got a complete set of friends and family and all these people to use accounts with i wouldn't lay a thing maybe some sort of two ups or something like i don't know but i'll, I'll what you got to do is make your mind up at the start you can't chop and change your mind and say I'm going to change from this option to that option because I keep getting unlucky on that. And then when I laid everything, everything started winning, so I chopped and changed to that. And then they all started losing. You've got to make your mind up before. But personally, if you don't lay, you haven't got the win portion out of the bet being consumed on your bankroll. The, also the place portion, which of course is not going to be anywhere near as that, as much as that. Especially if you're doing several horses in a race, you could use combined liabilities. Link down below from a combined liability video I've done before. Combined liability will come into it will uh, come and save you with some of these. It's different combined liability with place markets. I've also done a video about that before. Check down below because uh, with place markets, with a win market, if you've laid say this for ten pound it will be £33 of liability, which means you'd be able to place about £27 of liability on that and <coughs> have that £10 freed up. But with place markets, you have to lay three of them before you start getting the um, the combined liability factor kick in. So that's one thing to consider. If you don't lay, you haven't got that aggro of messing around, trying to get the value in between, like I was showing you earlier. And you haven't got the liability uh, that you need on your bet fair, but you've got a lot of variance. You can't predict anything. I believe there's more EV in this option, option one. The next option is option number two, slightly less bankroll needed, more control over the outcome. The negatives of variance, um, not being able to predict profits. So this is where you only lay the win part of the bet. The gutting thing about that is when, say, you do do that and a load of them actually win, that's quite nasty, that is. But the RB is all based around the place, isn't it? Option number three is lay all parts of the bet, but do it as an underlay, like I showed you earlier when we had that one that was on the place market that we stood to win £1.20 or something, were not it? £1.20, let's just do it on here. This will be a pound. So we'd stand to win a pound if it did place but nothing if it did place but then when we upped it we was getting about 80 percent that'd be less on this one now so what am i doing all right nine pound 20 nine pound 33 i don't know what i'm doing yeah 669 pound 35 i don't know 63 pesos six 
0.3% there. Yeah, so we was getting that if we overlaid it. So that's another option. This option here, doing this overlay, is option number four. This is probably, in my opinion, the most common one used because match betters like to know what they're getting. They like to see, oh, if I do this, I'll get this, and if I do that, I'll get that. I reckon the more they get into their match betting careers, the more they start veering into options three, maybe two, even one. Especially those guys that go into high risk casino, which even I ain't got the balls to do high risk casino. I hate it. It's, no, I'm gonna do another video on that showing because I didn't used to play slots until I got into high risk casino because I used to think there was a mugs game, and then just doing the high risk casino, I started playing slots just randomly. Uh, so I just had to stay away from him in the end. But anyway, I'm veering off course on this. But this is option number four, where you're overlaying that and you're also laying the win portion. The benefits of option number four is that you will win more times, but you only stand to win a certain amount of uh, winnings. This one, you'll win less, but you stand to win slightly more. This one here goes down even more. And this one here is a value betting approach where you're going to have a load of variants, but in my opinion, you'll get more. You need less bankroll, which is a yes, please. You'll get more money back as EV, yes, please. But the big X and no thank you is where you can't predict how much you're going to get. Anyway, I'm rambling on, on this, guys. If you want to do a free trial of Rebel Betting when it comes to value betting, there's a link down below. They've got a nice website. But if you like this type of video, guys, I was thinking to do a Telegram group for this. I don't know. What's your opinion on that, guys? Leave it down below, and I might open a Telegram group which gives you these selections each day, but I'm not going to do that till after Christmas. I don't know. What do you think? If I do, I'm going to leave the link down below, um, or I might just have a page on there because I like these, these bets, but they're a bit toxic, like I say. The thing is, they've been going on for so long, the bookies hate them, and just the fact that the bookies hate them just does excite me. Um, what's your opinions, guys, on these type of bets? Do you do you like doing them? Um, do you think that they're not worth doing? If you're a Sharber, do you like the terminals? Give us some terminal information. Um, if you haven't checked any of my other videos, guys, uh, type whatever you like in here. It'll probably pop up with something, because these videos don't get don't really get watched much like Arbin and stuff like that in there match betting um, I'm going to be creating regular content so please subscribe um, and give it a like if it's been of any use and I did intentionally take my time with this video because I've been told off before that I'll go too fast so any questions guys tap away down below Merry Christmas Happy New Year and Happy Bad Betting